Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Christopher Smithson. I'm with the Historic Society of Harford County. And this evening, uh, my topic is the courthouse burned. What do I do now? The term courthouses uh, burned counties was a phrase that originally started in the Commonwealth of Virginia that dealt more with the, uh, the county courthouses that were burned during the American Civil War. Uh, this was uh, burned uh, from the Civil War, also courthouses that were destroyed or wiped out by fire, by tornadoes, by war, by floods, by hurricanes, by earthquakes, rodent mold, tsunamis, or those sorts of things. Also cleaning street from clerks and disappearing records uh, throughout the United States, Canada, and throughout the world. There are several types of books that are out there that would help you when you're researching um, courthouses around the United States. Um, book Hidden Sources by Laura Pfeiffer, published in 2000. The Handy Book for Genealogists, which uh, printed all the way up to the 11th district, uh, 11th edition, uh, which was available both in book and CD form. Uh, some of these may now be out of print. Uh, you can now go to Amazon or eBay or uh, other sites, Bookfinder, uh, to possibly order some of these books. Um, there's also a quick sheet that was uh, published by uh, Elizabeth Schoen Mills. Um, called the Historical Biographer's Guide to Cluster Research, what we refer to as the FAN principle. And what that refers to is uh, when we talk about fans and doing genealogy is friends, associates, and neighbors. There are several types of online recommendations. Uh, first is Burnt County Research, uh, and the site is available there, which you well, we are recording this, so you're able to go online and later uh, look these things up. Um, examples of that is uh, an article that was done by the Virginia Geological Society in 1966, uh, which talked about uh, the burnt counties. There's also uh, several other websites uh, that also uh, talk about the different burnt counties uh, as well. Other online recommendations. Uh, was a, a blog uh, called the, the Tennessee Genealogy Blog by Arlene Eagle. Uh, and her blog was on uh, when the records are gone. And that's a very uh, good blog to, to reference and stuff to look at. Uh, also, an article uh, in the by uh, Michael Neal uh, called Burnt Counties that was published in the Family History Circle uh, several years ago. What type of records are you going to find in a courthouse? The first thing is clerks of court records, land records. Sometimes you have vital records depending on the jurisdiction and the states, marriage record, equity record, criminal records, court minutes, adoption records, naturalization records, oh, and election poll records. There's also other types of records out there too. With the register of wills, um, you have wills, estate records, estate files, distribution, guardian accounts, orphans court, inventories, administration accounts. Now, sometimes, uh, like in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, uh, the Register of Wills is the one that oversees the, the 19th century uh, vital records for that Pacific County prior to 1906. Um, that goes from the, the uh, 18... 80s roughly to about 1906 in Pennsylvania for the counties uh, with their vital records. They're held by the Register of Wills there. If anyone has any questions this evening, uh, you can put that in the chat and we'll go over those um, at the end. This was a, uh, a list of burnt counties. This was a partial list done many years ago and it probably needs some updating uh, this appeared on a website called Random Acts of Genealogy Kindness. Uh, when I originally did this talk in 2017, um, I would, it was based off of those updates. So uh, those 
there may be things in different jurisdictions that have changed over uh, over the years since that. Uh, so you can actually go to that website and go to where they talk about the burnt counties and it gives you a list of with the different states. Uh, what I'm going to focus more on tonight is um, not only Maryland, but also the Mid-Atlantic region that talks about the different areas around this area that, uh, in case you don't know about the different types of courthouse burns uh, that we've had in the Mid-Atlantic region. Here in Maryland, we had a wide variety of fires and uh, sorts of things. Um, Allegheny, Anne Arundel, Calvert. Calvert was one of the one of the two areas. Uh, Calvert was one of the bigger hit areas. Uh, there was a fire there in 1882, and there was actually a second fire in the same year. There was also some also um, some fires, uh, some stuff that happened prior to that. Um, yeah, Carroll County, Cecil. Um, in that, in Cecil's case, stuff had just disappeared. Um, Dorchester had a fire in 1852. Uh, Frederick had two major fires uh, with no major loss. Harford had a fire in 1858. Uh, some stuff was destroyed, but uh, to the point of it, it's mostly intact. Um, to, back to Calvert for a second. We have in, in that case, and even Dorchester, what they've done is uh, back after these fires had happened, uh, residents went back into the court and re-recorded their stuff. Uh, so you're in some cases, you're able to find materials uh, that were originated prior to the actual fire. That doesn't mean that everything's there, it means that there could be a selected things there. Other counties, uh, Howard, Kent, Montgomery, St. Mary's, uh, there was some stuff that, at St. Mary's that was destroyed. Um, Somerset with a fire in 1831, give me Talbot in Washington. Luckily in Delaware, there were no fires, no floods, nor tornadoes, uh, no damage as of the time when I originally did this talk in 2017. And as I, from right now, I don't know of anything that, that's happened in the last few years in Delaware. So the most of their stuff is intact. Uh, most of their stuff is online, on family search, on ancestry, both their land records and their probate records. Luckily, they only have three counties in it, in the state. Uh, so it's um, very easy to research in Delaware. Uh, they're the only state today that still use hundreds um, in their different jurisdictions. The rest of the states, I believe, do not do that. In Pennsylvania, there are a few uh, fires, Erie County, uh, Records prior to 1823 were destroyed. Franklin County, 1864, uh, that was caused by the 18th raid by McCausland raid in 1864 in Franklin County. Um, also, Mercer County burned in 1866 in the second fire in 1907. As you can see, Virginia has quite a few fires through many counties. I won't go over all of them. Uh, a lot of the, some of the fires dealt with the Civil War. Some of them were actually after that, uh, actually before the Civil War. Some were after the Civil War, and some were during the Civil War. Uh, Abermurl, Appomattox, um, Bland, Charles City, Caroline County, uh, Buckingham, Chesterfield, James City, King Queen County, um, Hanover, 
Greene County, Gloucester, to name a few, Fairfax, Louisa County, uh, New Kent, Prince William, Prince George, Surrey, Warwick, Washington, and Westmoreland. There's also an article, uh, a page on uh, a guide on the website with the Library of Virginia that talks about the lost records, both the counties and the cities with missing records. Uh, that's in a PDF file with the Library of Virginia uh, that will help you assist what actually specifically was destroyed uh, in, in, those, in those areas. What type of stuff do we not have anymore? What type of resources do we have available to us here in Maryland for Brent counties to help with the research um, when, when a county's records are burnt? Um, we have Maryland plats. Those things were recorded by the, by the, the state of Maryland through the, uh, lost a word, uh, through the, the different, uh, through the state of Maryland identifying the plats of the um, different plats of property that, that were patented over, over the years. Also the plats where properties were divided when different court cases were, were heard over the years, uh, whether case went to chancery or a property was actually um, surveyed. Those are also in there as well at the state level. Um, so that spans a period of time from 1634 up until uh, up until uh, now. So those different drawings and things. The, another thing we have is the Maryland Chancery Index that covers not only the state of Maryland, it also covers different counties uh, where stuff is there um, at the state archives. You also have the newspaper collection that that they're digitizing at the Maryland archives, as well as the church records that uh, for many years that they've digitized over the years at the Maryland archives. Um, if the stuff is not available on the website, you can um, go to the archives in person or have one so someone go for you. And a lot of these things have been taken from the microfilm and digitized onto the actual computers there in the search room in Annapolis. If it's not already public domain and already on the website. Again, where to look locally, but outside of uh, the state of Maryland, if you have ancestors from other areas of the state where you have records that have been burned, um, of course, church records, newspapers, town records, county histories. Uh, we have had cases I've had cases over the years where people have sent inquiries to different repositories and asked for something and they basically say it doesn't exist. And then it was something from the 1800s or the 1700s. And then just mysteriously, it shows up on family search after they've gone and digitized it. So uh, years and years later. So. Was it at the court in, in the repository the whole time, sitting in a box collecting dust, or was it there and you had a clerk who just didn't want to wanted to give a blanket answer so that they didn't have to actually go and look for it? Other types of state records that are out there that would help you. Um, census records, chancery records, state court records. Uh, what I mean by those is uh, Cases that are, are done at, uh, at the Court of Appeals uh, after it's done at the county level. Uh, sometimes it's appealed at the state level. Sometimes those papers have survived also the opinions uh, along with those. Uh, different archives may have stuff that may not be available, maybe in a private archives, maybe a university or a historical society or some other place that somebody has donated their materials to 
that may have collections of different state records for whatever reason. Also state pension files. Um, I know we have state pension um, items for the American Revolution, uh, for some things here in Maryland uh, during the revolution. We do have a payment information for those that served in the War of 1812 uh, at the Maryland Archives. Uh, there's also reparation pay uh, records at the Maryland Archives for those that served in the, uh, I believe, the American Revolution. Uh, those were asking for payment. Um, those records are there as well. What type of federal records are out there that would help you when something local was destroyed? Of course, pension files from the different wars, bounty land, uh, both the uh, American Revolution and the War of 1812, and also naturalization records. In naturalization records, you also have those uh, at the county level, but then you also have those at a higher court level, like the, um, the US District Court, like in Baltimore. Because uh, when you got, when you went to apply for naturalization and filed a declaration of intent, uh, you can go to any court in the state of Maryland uh, to file an intent and to file a uh, naturalization. So it may not be in the local circuit court, and maybe that courthouse burnt that maybe it may have been filed at the U.S. District Court or the Court of Appeals or wherever um, that the record may be there, it may not. What I have here is several examples of records of families from burnt counties and what actually survived in different areas that, that they were able to piece together some of the families uh, genealogy when the actual courthouse was actually destroyed, but a marriage record or whatever was sent to a, on a federal level to help fill out a pension or whatever, um, or a deposition was filed, it gave actual information that that's the only place it actually exists anymore. What we have here is the uh, bounty land claim for a gentleman by the name of Benjamin Kingley uh, from, from Rockingham County, Virginia. And he had served in the um, American Revolution, left no direct descendants, no so all of the descendants that were found were his um, uh, nieces and nephews and so forth. And from his 1781 will, uh, that was recorded in the federal level of uh, the documents that, that are here on the screen uh, survived only at the archives, uh, the National Archives because Sheridan had burnt the courthouse during the Civil War and a bounty land application was done years later. Another example that we have here is a Royal State War pension voucher. This was done in Jackson, uh, Tennessee Payment Agency in Carroll County uh, Tennessee had a fire in 1872. And so that's the, that Revolutionary War pension voucher. It's the only document that basically documents that information. This is a Royal, uh, I'm sorry, a War of 1812 bounty land warrant uh, that was filed on the federal level that survived. Uh, where this person lived was in uh, Fentry, I'm probably saying that wrong, County, Tennessee, and they actually had a fire in 1905, so none of that items uh, exist anymore. Uh, so 
for example, if there was a record of it at the county level, that's gone. Um, so this was actually done, um, submitted on the federal level, so that actually, that information actually survived. Uh, that provided uh, a deposition, specifically like when the person died, when they were married, uh, their actual service during the War of 1812, and, and so forth. And this is another page of that document as well. This is a War of 1812 uh, pension file uh, from a soldier by the name of Jasper Bowen from Calvert County, Maryland. Uh, they have survived it at the federal level. Uh, again, they had a fire in 1882, so all that this was actually prior to that. This was from the 1870s. So that person's information is basically documented, a part of history that, um, and this was filed by them themselves. So they actually lived long enough to the act of uh, the uh, War of 1812 Pension Act of uh, 1870, February of 1871 um, to file a national. Uh, soldiers original to the um, pension for the war for the War of 1812 service. Let me see what type of questions anybody has this evening. Um, did churches get burned at the same frequency as the courthouses in the same areas? Um, I'm going to say no because it, it's, it's one of these things where it, it, two different items. So it, churches were burned for any number of things um, from stuff happening at the church and the, uh, versus an actual arson or something of a church. Um, it, it really depends on the background of why the church was burnt, whether it was accidental or whether it was uh, arson. Um, I don't think it was, I don't think it was the same frequency as, as with the way we were seeing courthouses being burnt, um, especially in the South. When Sheridan came through during the Civil War, it was a to, to me, the way to explain it is with courthouses, it was more to show the, the South that basically they had no entitlement to, to, to their property, so they couldn't prove their ownership. Um, so as towards churches burning down, it could be a, a, a number of things, but I, I wouldn't say that it was on the same frequency scale. Anyone else have any questions? If you want to unmute your mics, you can. Our next event will be October the 15th uh, at the Historic Society for Family History Month. Uh, it will be a series of speakers. Uh, the fee will be $20 a person. There will be a series of speakers throughout that event. and. We will be having uh, updated details uh, forthcoming on that. I thank you all for attending this evening and have a good night. Thank you.